Ladies and gentlemen, today we have a very special interview with Dr. Debo Matthew. Who is Dr. Debo Matthew? Dr. Debo Matthew is one of those rare HR leaders who actually put people first. He strives to create win-win situations for the employees and the companies he worked for. He is well known for managing sensitive situations with maturity, integrity, and justice. Dr. Matthew has more than 20 years of experience with leading international organizations operating in the GCC countries. He had his doctorate of business administration in human resources development from Swiss Business School and a doctorate of philosophy in human resources management from Charisma University in the UK. He is an HR generalist with wide experience with all HR functions, including human resources information system, HRIS, employee relations, recruitment, policies and procedures, organizational development, business partnering, HR development, HR operational management, exchange management, team building, manpower, planning, HR administration, payroll and budgeting, communication, compensation and benefits, research and investigation, disciplinary and grievance management. Dr. Matthew firmly stands for three P's in HR called people, passion, and performance, which he believes to practice as lifestyle being an HR professional. To learn more about, to learn more about Dr. Debo Matthew, I will add also the link of his LinkedIn account. Dr. Ma uh, Matthew, you are very welcome. Thank you for joining us on tonight's episode. Can you hear me, Doctor? Thank you so much, Mr. Sobi. Yes, I can. Thank you so much. And it's a great pleasure to be on your on this platform. Thank I'll be chatting with you live. And uh, I'm very, uh, very honored to be on this platform. To go ahead with the discussion, let me uh, go through a few words, uh, which I think is very important at this point of time. The world is going through a sensitive period. All are fighting to whether against the pandemic called Corona, COVID-19. This is the time we require inspirational leadership, inspirational leaders who are optimistic and visionary. I take this opportunity on your platform to thank all the visionary leaders of UAE who have ensured that all of us are safe to be able to continue to work and contribute towards the growth of this country. I also wholeheartedly thank for the commendable work and salute all those healthcare professionals who have put their life ahead of everything and have done a commendable job selflessly to the community. Emphasizing here on inspiration leadership because today at this juncture, we need this time for all sort of companies and departments to encourage our employees to create a belief in themselves that employee can do wonders. And this belief will create uh, performance excellence. So at this juncture, I call upon inspirational leaders whom the employees would look upon. Thank you so much for again inviting me on your platform. You're most welcome, Dr. You're most welcome. All the thanks to you. Uh, doctor, uh, allow me to start with a question from your, your wide experience. What are your thoughts about management and HR management? Well, um, in today's scenario, managing resources is no longer a challenge, to be very honest with you. Uh, uh, almost most two decades in this industry, I can definitely tell you the biggest challenge is to manage, uh, take care of the employees and developing them, not managing them anymore. So in today's scenario, 
we must take care of employees, develop them to achieve the personal and company objectives or goals. That's what management is for me. HR management uh, for me is an emotional approach to help guide employees to overcome their weaknesses and develop their strengths. Most importantly, hiring right people, right place at the right time and most challenging and critical is at the right compensation. All this must be in company's vision and values. That's more important because whatever you do from HR standpoint must be aligned initiative towards achieving company's goal. So HR has come a long way from being a personal department to human capital and the most recent trend is people management. Hence, the key is employee recognition at any time, at any given point of time. I would say the key in human resources management is employee recognition, which will result into employee engagement. Absolutely. Leading to performance apart from your competitors. Uh, thank you so much. Absolutely. Yani, you are this is the point that we all searching for employer recognition and uh, now allow me please to go like in a wider perspective to take one step back for uh, like just for others I, I want to ask about hr as a profession what do you think of hr as a profession well uh people, different people would have different perspectives personally on me. And I would, I would say according to me, HR is a lifestyle. Whichever profession you are in, it doesn't matter because irrespective, irrespective of which positions, which functions you head or manage, you must, ma you must have HR skills because you will have people underneath. Eventually, this is what will make you a better manager. Because if you have a lifestyle which you follow, that no longer becomes an obligation for you because that's your lifestyle. And that's what I believe in. So according to me, HR is a soul of any company. Like finance may be considered as blood. IT or ERP system may be termed as departments uh, with synergy and the efforts are collectively gained to achieve the objectives. So for me, HR is a soul of any company. HR is a lifestyle which HR professionals should live. Absolutely right. It is a lifestyle that we need to live it. But what about those who are working in fun as function managers? And what are your thoughts about function managers studying HR? like HR for non-HR managers? Uh, very good question, uh, Mr. Sobi. Um, I'm sure a couple of people may not agree with me, but for me, I firmly believe that uh, if not uh, everyone, you know, every function manager must undergo HR training for better people management, for uh, keeping their key team motivated, keeping their team engaged uh, to drive performance and to achieve, ultimately that's the key, to achieve the objective of company or goals of the company. So none of this is possible if you are a good manager and being a good manager is not uh, you know, just achieving your targets or just ensuring that the tasks are completed. It is more to do with having a bond with the employees having an engagement with them, motivating them, uh, creating a sense of belonging. That's what drives performance. So for me, the key is like finance, for fi non-finance managers are encouraged in more, almost every company, HR for non-HR professionals need to be encouraged and trained because ultimately people are assets. To manage assets, you need experts. So that's what uh, is my take on it. Absolutely right. To manage assets, you need experts. And so every function manager needs to be expert on managing people. It's very, very deep thought. Yes. Thank you so much. But now another question will come like from uh, those 
function managers if they want to learn HR, how can they learn the best practices in HR functions for their fun to, for, to manage their function properly? Well, best practices are nothing but naturally inclined practices uh, towards achieving goal. So for me, best practices of HR would come from coaching. If the function managers are interested in their people, developing, uh, uh, interested in developing their people, interested to motivate their people, get them engaged uh, to drive uh, superior performance, then they must be coached. They must undergo trainings in HR to ensure that they know uh, the scientific, uh, emotional thoughts and reasoning behind uh, behaving with their colleagues or behaving with their subordinates. And they will see there is there will be a difference and there are differences. And that's why you have uh, managers, workforce. Uh, we need to understand the underlying fact that people do not leave companies. They actually leave managers. So it is important for a company to invest in good people as well as good managers to be able to have a, a balance to ensure that there is a sustainable uh, development in people and that sustainability will lead to uh, a consistent performance by the people. So I would write it like, like a quote, people don't leave companies, they leave managers. Yes, yes. So this is very, very true. But uh, now we spoke about function managers about our colleagues in HR function, what advice do you give to those who are currently working in the HR profession and to HR managers as well? Well, uh, I'm very humbled to give suggestions to people who are already in the field uh, doing, a, doing an excellent job. But uh, for me, uh, the key is hard work. Uh, hard work is the key, but in today's scenario, uh, working hard is not just enough. The key is working smartly. So it is a known fact that passion will drive performance. There is absolutely no doubt about it. But passionate people will drive your performance uh, uh, greater than, than non-passionate non people. So it is important to identify people who have absolute passion towards their work and encourage them. And it is more important uh, uh, for any HR professionals to read, read about latest trends in HR and the developments in and around HR within various industries, because it may, may not be from the same industry. Best practices across any industry is best practice. So we need to read about it. We need to know about it. And then as, as a, a sensible HR professional, you need to see that how those good practices can be aligned with your own company's business objectives. Some may not be suitable for your company, but some may be, but that needs uh, tweaks and twists, which, which is supposed to be done by a seasoned HR professional to ensure that he aligned those initiatives, those good things, those soft touches, those best practices to, to come on board to embrace and to, to encourage people to embrace those changes. Most importantly, I, I think all HR initiatives, uh, irrespective of what it is from small to big, needs to have uh, underlying understanding that why it is being adopted. Ultimately, any HR professional is in the company to achieve certain goals. And that's those certain goals need to be aligned with the company's vision and company's value. Once you align your initiatives with company's objective values, you will see automatically things fall in place. And this is what I call as business partnering, or this is what is widely known in the industry as business partnering. We are no longer a function which is there to support the business. We are together with the business to make a difference. Excellent. Business partnering. This is the key point here. Understanding the vision of the company, the mission, and not anymore we are in the back office. 
now in the front office working with the management to achieve their vision. Absolutely. And, uh, and we are partners with all function managers. Dr. Debo, thank you so much. This is like this wisdom, like it takes years for us to develop and deeply understand. Uh, now I want to ask you now in GCC countries, in UAE, during your career, you work with top-notch companies in the world. What of their HR practices do you like most? Well, uh, there are multiple HR uh, practices which I could count on, but due to the time limitations, I would limit them to a couple of them. There are some uh, seriously uh, good HR practices uh, in a couple of my companies where I work with, like policies, uh, policies on uh, paternity leave, you know, uh, we have maternity leave by law and we have maternity law in almost every HR policy, but there are very few good uh, companies who adopt into paternity leave and which is one of the key elements which I believe uh, to have a effect because ultimately parenthood is something to celebrate. So according to me, both the parents should have equal opportunity to celebrate the parenthood and um, you know, employees, uh, come, uh, employees really feel uh, touched when, when, when the companies celebrate their parenthood uh, along with them by giving them this uh, liberty to, to enjoy and uh, to have that time with the new, newborn baby. Uh, uh, the, the other be best practices I would, I would say is automation, ERP systems. Uh, when, you, when you are a company uh, with, with massive size and scale, and volume of business, you would definitely end up into having an HRMS system or ERP system. And automation is in today's scenario is the key because that will make your life easy. Um, similarly, um, automation comes into different sectors. It can be in services. Uh, I could give an example where uh, you sit on a computer, you apply for your salary certificate and your salary certificate is in your inbox in the next two minutes. With, with everything done, you see? So there is absolutely uh, full automation. Uh, it's, it's run, uh, you know, uh, the company understands what, that, what, are, the, what are the requirements which, are, which an employee uh, will have, especially from a UAE scenario. And it is, it is uh, bang on available. Similarly, recruitment. Um, in, in my past experience, I've worked with a company where uh, you know, your, your ERP system, the HRMS recruitment module is connected with uh, top-notch uh, recruitment agencies. You just need to key in the uh, words, the keywords, and you get multiple CVs. You get uh, dozens of CVs. And the recruiters can make a shortlist based on the requirement. And uh, they just, uh, you know, shortlist things and they can just uh, pull up those shortlisted people for uh, lining up interviews. Uh, similarly for training, you know, uh, I have been a part of a, a company which was associated or which was rather associated with um, uh, renowned universities to get certifications. They actually invest heavily on it. Uh, that means that the employee uh, at any point of time uh, of his working schedule on or off, can go log into their portal and get trainings from the, from the list of trainings available from that university. And the moment you finish the training, uh, you will be certified by the university. Plus your line manager will have an email from the university uh, informing him that his employee has finished a training on X, Y. So that's a massive achievement for me as far as I'm concerned because your life is easy, you know. The the moment your your people are encouraged to go and develop themselves, that is the scenario. Ideally, every company wants to have because they have invested uh, in their employees by providing them this tool to to uplift their uh, skills, to enhance their skills, and ultimately, what it gives is it gives a better performance. It gives a better understanding of. Uh, work to uh, for that employee who has finished those certifications. Amazing. So like that, uh, if management is the optimum utilization of resources, the time here is employees are not spending time on admin staff 
immediately they have the requirement for field that will give them like motivating motivating uh, environment and also the talented people who are driven wants to grow in their knowledge and skills they have the golden opportunity at the same time their management notified so many things it means like uh, working will be all, all everybody is focusing on achieving the vision of the management rather than finding out how to do the admin thing see this is what i call alignment because uh, when the company is driven by performance everything is automated now when you set your goals at the beginning of the year uh, it is predefined that what is to be achieved by an employee and to achieve this uh, goals what are the tools required if not you have at this point of time so that's where the training need analysis comes into place so this is where it is linked with those courses which you might require to achieve those goals so it's all linked so ultimately you go for a training which is associated with your work or uh, required for you to perform your job better so company in a way has given you a tool to set goals and to achieve goals by using these tools uh, available tools so like this will lead me to another question in this scenario like how can hr managers in the uae drive results well uh, driving results is uh, is a wider spectrum for me because driving results results will come as a uh, as a final point of multiple things when you do things right and the multiple things could be uh, from the goal setting or i would rather say the multiple things uh, would start from hiring the right person uh, for the company because it is very essential for us to understand that uh, whenever we hire someone uh, in the company he may not be the right uh, fit for the company he might be the right person for that position and i'm sure you might have multiple people shortlisted for that position and out of that maybe one or uh, you know ultimately one or uh, there will be no one who will be selected they will go for another round of uh, you know uh, interviews but ultimately the objective is hiring the right candidate for the company so the key here is selecting the right candidate for the company because he might be the right candidate for the position that is why he got shortlisted so you need to hire the right candidate for the company so that he can align himself or he can ensure that his visions are in line with company's vision therefore he will work try strive to achieve those goals and so and also uh, i would say uh, introduction of kpis because kpis in today's world is the most important thing key performance indicators and if you have your kpis set and those kpis are smart then you see there is no reason why an employee or the company does not achieve the objectives at the end of the day the companies which have smart kpi set for all employees are the companies which make difference in the in the market you will see those are the companies which are successful and automating kpis will absolutely remove the bias so it gives you a very transparent approach from a company's side to be able to motivate employees more to participate more to achieve more to get engaged and ultimately these all drives to performance i mean perfect so now the right selection of the employees and followed by the right kpis it's like a horse race you will select the best best horse and put them with the kpis so you'll achieve targeted results on time now uh, describe an ideal workplace from hr perspectives wow that's that's uh, that's a that's a difficult question well um from my perspective uh i 
I don't see there is an ideal workplace anywhere. I would rather say uh, HR, or I would rather say that the leaders or the leadership of the company create uh, ideal workplace. They are the people who are behind uh, to, to create an atmosphere where ideal people can work. So for me, uh, removing barriers between the departments, uh, not working in silos, but ensuring that every individual employee is working towards the achievement of the uh, goal of the company is, is important. That's an ideal workplace. So in, 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 in nutshell or in, in layman's language, I would say every, if every individual in a company knows what he's supposed to do, and if he knows that what is my company's ultimate objective, then the barriers are no longer there because ultimately he's not working for himself or his department. He is working for the company. So when company is, is in front of you or company is first, then automatically that's the ideal workplace because there everyone tries to achieve, everyone puts company in front and everyone tries to achieve their best to achieve the goals of the company not their individual goals. Of course, individual goals makes a lot of difference because that's what boils down to achieving uh, the department objective and department objective cumulatively makes the company's objective uh, achieved. But ultimately, if everyone does their job perfectly fine without any ambiguity, you are, you are on the right track. So an ideal workplace for me where there is no gray fine. So, you know, I just, I'm trying to imagine it. Like I've, in this way, we are getting everybody in the company rowing in the same direction. So we can dominate any industry at any time against any competitions. The HR become creative of core competencies for the organization. And here the key, key, Mr. Sobi, here the key, Mr. Sobi, I would like to emphasize is leadership. Leadership, sorry. It is very, very crucial and important because ultimately they are the one who lays down the foundation for the employees to follow or the managers uh, to inspire. So it is very important for the leadership to ensure that they create an atmosphere for every individual in the to, to, to perform and to achieve. So this should be the, the motors of the employees when they work, perform and achieve. And that can only come from from an environment where leaderships are looking at strategy. So the culture is leadership and the culture atmosphere. And this is, uh, when we have this culture, everybody will grow and the organization will grow. Uh, I have sustainable growth. Sustainable growth. Uh, actually, I'm receiving always inquiries about uh, outsourcing. Like, can HR functions be outsourced? How? When business owners shall seek the advice of external HR experts, uh, from your perspective, is this doable? Well, uh, outsource is a, is a model which, which, which is there in the market for long years. Uh, I have uh, uh, you know, mixed opinion about it. I would say if a company is not into large size and volume, they can definitely outsource. It all depends on the business model. If you are into a sensitive uh, business, then I'm sure your information, your employee information are sensitive in nature. Therefore, you may not opt for uh, an outsourcing model. But however, if you are in an industry or if you are in a business where uh, your key uh, aspect of business is your key operations, then you only focus on operations. The rest of the things can be outsourced and that can be managed well and uh, managed uh, quite economically than having those departments in place. But when you are, when you are large in size, when you have uh, resources to manage, when you have uh, uh, business units to manage, then uh, I, I don't think uh, outsourcing will be a good model you must adopt to uh, in-house HR departments where you have in-house uh, divisions or departments within HR to 
take care of individual spe uh, specialities like recruitment, employer services, learning and development, performance management, payroll services. You know, so these are for, these are the center of excellence. These are the specialities, and you must have business partners to to align themselves with business and to give solutions to the business on a timely timely manner, so that uh, business doesn't need to get uh, affected by uh, any of the uh, you know uh, delays which they they would come across uh, while if they are an outsourced model so thank you so much it's like a very important point you have touched and here the size of the organization and ex exactly what you want to outsource and what will be the targeted results uh, i have like i want to move a little bit to our area and particularly to the arab world uh, I have like, what advice do you give Arab job seekers to become more competitive on the labor markets? As you can, as you know now, uh, have some other countries they are suffering a lot and they have looking to world with dark glasses. They have no hope. They will ask if you work hard, there is any opportunity for us to get a decent job. From your wide experience, what advice do you? Tell these people. Well, uh, in my past two decades in UAE, uh, I'm fortunate to have worked with multiple nationalities um, across the board. And I, if you if you if you seek my advice, I would say uh, the candidates should focus on the basic qualification. That's very very important. Mm -hmm. uh, irrespective whether he comes from an Arab world or he comes from an Asian world. Qualification at this point of time, or any point of time uh, for that matter, is very important. So uh, attaining or obtaining basic qualification is very important. Uh, they must be passionate. Uh, I'm not saying they should be in, uh, passionate about HR, but I'm saying in general, they should be passionate about anything what they do, because that's the only way you can, you can touch success or you can achieve success. So work hard, show dedication, there is enormous opportunity uh, and there is acute shortage of talents every time. So it is important that we, uh, we do not lose hopes, we be persistent and we consistently apply ourselves uh, into the job role or what we have, what we are performing. So the key here is hard work, and the key here is passion. So you need to be a passionate per person about your work, whichever area of expertise or whichever domain you chose, choose. Um, that has to be absolutely with passion. And you will see uh, if you put uh, consistent hard work, uh, you will see the results. Um, no one can stop you. Uh, and it applies to every person uh, across every country, uh, and there is no boundaries and there is no, um, uh, you know, uh, nationality specific uh, advice to anyone. This applies to everyone and predominantly to, 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 to the Arab world as well. Uh, th those are the keys. So like we can say in the labor market, all organizations are looking for serious people who have the passion, education, and they want to work hard and to achieve results. So just... Yes. Let them focus on creating, on getting the best educational, the basic certificate, and to present themselves well to the companies. Now, now as let's say these people, they they get a job. Now it will move us to another question: What advice do you give those people who are working and they will receive or will be like managed by serious and dedicated managers? How they can maintain their job under dedicated managers? And allow me to say, like most managers nowadays, the serious one, like if you go to Google, Microsoft, leading organizations, they are coming from Asia. So how can I maintain my job and uh, have my manager trust me and believe like I'm a good employee under his management? Uh, I, would, I would like to repeat uh, one of my comments, which I made earlier. Managers are as good as their employees. 
So putting this into perspective, irrespective of where your manager is from, uh, you must be adaptive. That's the, that's the most important thing. You must be adaptive. Uh, you must be honest, ethical, and resilient. These are some key things which, which, uh, which the person must understand, uh, irrespective of which field he works, which function he works. Listening to ideas, suggestions, most important, focus on the big picture, the objective of the company. If a person has these qualities or these skills within him or her, I'm sure uh, his manager would be very fortunate to have such people working under him. So it will make no difference to work for a manager from any country if you have these qualities inbuilt in you. Absolutely right. I just am reading a comment from one participant and also he is like a famous HR manager in Abu Dhabi. Uh, his name is Mr. Ma'moon Atiyah. He said, I believe nowadays candidate needs to show that he or she has the required qualifications and, ex and experience for the job in addition to the wit, skills, competencies, and creativity, which is an edge over other candidates. Absolutely, yes. I would, I would, I would agree with that. Now I I will I now I, I already I took more than the thirty minutes. Uh, I, I will end with this last question. You know now in the education market we have uh, academic qualifications and we have also we can professional certificates such as PMB, CIMA, ACCA, PM, uh, ITIL, and others. Now, uh, what do you advise those who are now studying? To focus, is academic qualification enough? Is professional certification enough? Or what, as HR manager, which CV do you prefer to read and screen and shortlist for the interview? Well, uh, I would see this in, in a quite different manner. Uh, for me, learning and development is continuous. Uh, whether you are in human resources or not, learning and development needs to be continuous because you need to continuously develop yourself. And with that, I come to a question that in today's scenario, uh, your academic qualification is definitely very, very important. But without professional certification from professional bodies, uh, you would not have the edge over others. Therefore, it is very important to have the academic qualification in place, you attain your uh, academic qualification in the in the in the universities you have in your respective countries. At the same time, attain professional international certifications like PMPs and uh, you know uh, ACCA, uh, CMAs uh, in different functions. Uh, the need of the hour is very much the edge over others. So you can make a difference being a, being a candidate, you can make a difference over others only if you have the edge of having the qualification, not just qualification, having a continuous development on your own self, plus uh, having the right sort of uh, attitude towards the function you belong to. And uh, more than that, importantly, whether you, uh, uh, you know, you, to read books, to read books from uh, subject experts, irrespective of which domain you, you work for, uh, and uh, read books from the bodies of these certifications so that you completely understand a comprehensive, you, you, you get a comprehensive understanding of what these certifications and what these certifications are meant for, how these certifications will help you. Ultimately, these are designed to help a, 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 per, a person or a candidate uh, attain more knowledge uh, or rather, uh, you know, industrial or, or rather very uh, acute knowledge on, on things which he needs to perform. So this is very important. So for me, both are very, very important and very, uh, very much crucial and relevant uh, to, to seek a job or to be, ha have an edge over others when, especially if you are in the queue. Okay. 
Excellent. Thank you so much, Dr. Devo. I totally agree with you. So uh, just to sum, out, sum up that academic qualification is perfect, but we have always to have a professional certificate to have more competitiveness in the labor market. Not only com competitiveness, just suppose we get the job and in the job, you have to prove yourself. You have to add value. To have, you have to achieve the vision of your uh, employer. When you have this uh, professional certificate, it will give you the know-how in deeper way, and it will make you understand more what will be how how to be a good team player with your leader. So no 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 limit for education. Uh, Absolutely, no no limit for learning. That will end. Uh, till your last breath. So it has to be continuous. There is no there is no stoppage for education at any given point of time, whether it is academic or professional. You need to upgrade yourself because tomorrow is unpredictable. So you need to be ready for the challenges which uh, which you may encounter tomorrow. So the key is being ready, and uh, uh, you know face the world with the right uh, arm in your with the right ammunition in your hand. Uh, I received a note from Mr. Taisir Bukai, who is like a famous manager in Sharjah. He, th he said he'd like to thank you for this informa informative session. And uh, he learned very well from you. And not only Mr. Taisir, but everybody who joined us and who will be watching this video, who will keep this video for a long time on Facebook and on YouTube and on Instagram, uh, we, are, we learned a lot in this because, you know, uh, Dr. Debo, a lot of time we learn about HR from only theoretical perspective, but meeting someone, you know, 80-20 rule, we have 20 people who make a difference in the HR world, and now we have the chance to listen to a, I call you HR guru, uh, those who, uh, you created a difference and, uh, you manage a huge number of employees efficiently and effectively, and you shared now with us your knowledge and your wisdom. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you so much for everything you gave us. There's like a last point you want to end up with. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Tassir, who, who shared a, a good, uh, good words uh, on, your, on your platform. Uh, I, would, I would rather thank all your audience um, all your followers who are actually influenced by your platform. Uh, I'm a very humble HR profession, uh, professional. I would definitely not call myself as guru at any point of time because I myself believe in continuous learning and learning has no end. Uh, I am on the journey and uh, uh, whatever experience I have gained so far, it is, uh, it is just because I was fortunate to work with good companies and good managers. And that's why I firmly believe that uh, you know people are very attached uh, to the companies and managers they work for. So my key was always to be uh, a sensible uh, manager and to ensure that the objectives at the same time, objectives of the companies are met smartly. So that's the key here. And uh, uh, to end, to sum up, uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Sobi, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, I'm very grateful and honored to be on this platform and to all your um, viewers uh, who have taken time to come and listen to me. I'm, I'm indebtedly grateful to them. And it's an absolute honor to address uh, this gathering online. All the thanks to you, Dr. Debo. And I promise our Arabic participants to do my best to make like some Arabic subtitling in the future for this meeting. So I will share the wisdom as wide as possible. Uh, and I hope we'll have like Dr. Debo with us in the future in other episodes, whenever he, have, whenever he has time. Thank you everybody. Thank you very much for being with us and looking forward for our next meeting next week. And this is Sophie Akbik from Dubai wishing you pleasant evening. Assalamu alaikum.